Hi, I'm your host, Tracy Daly. My last podcast didn't have as much personality in, according to both my wife and one of my closest friends. was telling me it wasn't as happy and peppy as I usually am, which, um, considering the case was a murder, it's probably a good thing. At the same time, I did sound extremely robotic, so let's see if we can explain a little bit about me. Today, I took both of my daughters, Rose and Ellen, to school, and I don't do that often. I've been off, I've been off work because my wife's not very well, but I got to take them both today, and it was beautiful. We walked hand in hand down the road. One's eight, and the other one's only four. And they're swinging their arms and generally laughing and joking around. We got to the other side of the road. Like cattle, the people were all herded into one little area waiting for the gates to open at primary school, uh, dropping in the eldest first. And so instead of wait around, I said, well, what we do is we walk further up the road and we'll play around up there and we'll walk down. We'll, we'll kill with 10 or 15 minutes before we get to go into the school. So we got to the curb and we jumped over the curb and we jumped back over the curb and then there was a branch in the road and we're playing sort of hopscotch over this branch and the little one's laughing and joking and she jumps on it and it snaps and she looks at me and she smiles and she's like, Dad, I broke it. Well done, kiddo. You know, come on. We walk back up and we walk back up and walk back again and outwardly everything is absolutely perfect and, you know, for... 75-80% 75-80% of my internals is absolutely perfect as well. I'm having a really good time with both my kids doing something I don't usually get to do. I don't usually get to take me in the morning. I'm seeing people I know. They're like, all right, Tracy, I do I'm like, yeah, I'm not so bad yourself, blah, blah, blah. We'll just carry on going for it. But there's another part of me. There's another part that's very aware and very... Even to the point of clinical, it's black and white. I noticed when I was walking down towards the school, I was swinging around, so I had a laugh. There was a woman in a car smoking with a little boy. And as I got closer, she got out of the car and made out she was just smoking a cigarette outside the car. And I noticed the guy who just dropped his kid in at the end, got in his car and drove off, which a lot of parents do because it seemed safe. There's, what, 30 children there waiting the 10 minutes to go in? Couldn't be problematic in the slightest. No teachers. They're there with other parents, seemingly. None of which seem to be directly associated with that child, but still. Uh, And in my mind, I'm thinking, take seconds. Literally does. Excuse me, mate. Have a look at this, you know. Your dad said about you checking this out in the back of this car. In you get. Done. That's it. Gone. Take seconds. Covered registration. All you're going to know is a blue car took this lad. That's it. And it, it's terrifying. It's absolutely terrifying. And so the gates opened. And as these these kids all went in, these teachers came out. You had um, two teachers on the gate and then two further up. And I walked up with my little one. And loads of kids just running everywhere at this point. And I bumped into one of the teachers, and my daughter says, it's okay, you can let me go now. I'm like, no, 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 I'm not going anywhere until one of these recognises and says your name, you know. I want to know you know who they are, and they know who you are. And she said, yeah, I know who they are. I said, well, that's great. I said, but you're eight, you know. As far as I know, you could go straight through that door there, come straight out the other door, and no one's going to even know you've been in the school. I said, I know you wouldn't. I said, but that's not what's going to happen, kid. We're not going to do it like that. So I walked up and while the teacher said, hey, Tracy, how are you doing? I'm like, hey, I know you, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, there's my little one, in you go. It's all fine. But I remember when I was a kid, walking straight in through the high school doors, signing in to say I was there, walking down the corridor, walking straight back out again, spending the day out on the field drinking with the lads. It was just a different way of looking at things. And I remember thinking that was perfectly normal and not having a care in the world. And I know my girls, my girls, A, don't do that, won't do that, and are a little bit younger, anyway. Then we walked over, once the oldest had been dropped in, to the nursery school, which is only a, a, you know, a few roads down. Along the way, I noticed as we turned down one of the paths, there was a fellow at the window. There's no big deal. 
again, we're dancing, we're jumping over the squares in the road, and she's swinging her arms around, and she's found, um, it's not an acorn, it's like a fern type thing, and she wants to call it in, and do sprinkles all over it, what do you call it, glitter, and I'm like, yeah, we're chatting about that, and I made eye contact with this fellow, and he sort of went back behind his window, and I wonder how many times that there's somebody walking down that path, and they don't realise he's actually been sat there watching them. Might be quite innocent. Might be nothing whatsoever. He might have even watched one of his own kids or his own grandkids. He was an older fellow going up there towards the school and making sure they're safe from his window. I don't know. Maybe he's got a condition he sits there night after night. I have no idea whatsoever. But I know I was aware of it. And I was tuned in to the potential of what could occur to some degree. And if it was to ever happen. As I walked past, something caught my eye on the right hand side. I noticed there was no curtains on that property and there was a bunk bed right next to the window. I was like, that doesn't make much sense. Why would you have a children's bed right next to a window with no curtains up, no nets, no nothing? Maybe they're decorating. Maybe they're not. But it seemed a bit strange. I walked further up and I noticed one of the nursery girls that was coming down changed direction. She was looking at her phone. She glanced up slightly, changed direction, went round the other way. I noticed later on she was in the school, so I don't know why she changed direction, but it's not a major deal. She didn't seem to be being followed, but these things clicked into my head all the while outwardly. I'm singing songs now with my little one, and we're going up towards the nursery. We get towards the nursery, and there's no one there, because I've got this thing about being on time. Early's on time, on time's late, late's unacceptable. I had that in my head from when I was a little lad, because my father drilled it into me. Early's on time, on time's late, late's unacceptable. And so... I get there, there's no one there. And for me, that's a good thing. Because, hey, it's now acceptable. It's on time. And we start running and jumping down the car park lights. So we're walking one behind the other, and then we're going down the next one, and the next one we're jumping up and down. And anybody looking is going to see a father playing with their kid and having a great time. And I loved it. I genuinely enjoyed the experience of having a race back and forward with her. But what I don't generally share is also there's another part. I wanted to run back and forward. Why? I wanted to be seen that I was on the grounds, not doing anything I shouldn't be doing because I was running up and down with a kid. So I was very visual. But I was also checking who was behind the building, who was down the side of the building, who was coming in or going out of both of the exits. That I could see every point, including the properties behind the actual nursery building and who could be overlooking first thing in the morning. Am I paranoid? No, I don't think so. But I would say I'm secure. I don't feel uncomfortable with being in this way. I don't feel nervous or edgy being in this way. It's something I've kept for a long, long time. And you wouldn't know it. You would have no idea unless I told you. You would just see happy peppy dad playing around with his door. And that's the difference between somebody who's had a traumatic history, somebody who's grown up with a psychopath, or... Somebody who's, not me in this instance, but somebody who's seen action, maybe being in the military or maybe being in the police, and they've had to be aware and on guard over and over again. And it does condition you to a degree to be aware of every eventual situation, every possibility. I used to think it was a horrible thing. I used to think it was a really, really bad thing until I had um, fire marshal training, first aid training with a fellow at a place I worked, and the question came up to a group of 30 people, and he said, you know, how many exits in the building? He looked around, and I nodded to him, and he said, yeah, go on, Trace. And I said, ah, three. And he said, okay, what's the quickest way out? I said, straight here, here. He said, if it's blocked, and I explained, and he went through what would happen if a car hit the building, or if there was a fire in one corner of you know, the courts, or whatever it was, and I had an answer for every single situation. I'd already thought about it through the natural day-to-day -day progression of just having this job. I'd thought of all of the worst case situations, which is normal if you are in that field. It's normal if you're a major first aid or a trauma responder or somebody who's a, a fireman. It's not normal if you're me, average Joe, who should have... If only we say average Joe, we're going to talk a little bit later about uh, a jealous Joseph, but it's not normal if you're average Joe. It might be 
if you have some sort of traumatic history there. And I've learned to deal with that, I've learned to live with it, I've learned to have it in a very positive way. Shortly later on in the queue, there was a woman taking a selfie at the school, with the school in the background. And I've got no doubts whatsoever she had her location settings on, which is not a major deal until you realise that puts her right at the scene with proof to back that up and pretty much anybody who knows anything about computers or phones can locate her. There was a woman just after that pulling a child along, a little boy, just before she got in line of sight of the nursery and she was walking ahead, his arm was outstretched behind. He wasn't pulling her back, he wasn't being a brat or anything. And even if he was, you know, I've been guilty of going, come on, hurry up, get your finger out, we've got to get there, let's move. Come on, get her, let's go. You know, no quicker, go, go, go. But she was very much more like, hurry up, come on, for fuck's sake. And as soon as she got round the corner, as soon as she was line of sight of the other person stood in the queue at the nursery, she was all happy smiles. Her demeanour completely changed. She was suddenly putting on the perfect parent persona. I recently watched I Am A Killer on Netflix, and it was the case of Pyro Joel. This is a great programme for noting the differences of how people think who've been abused. And his was certainly remarkable. I won't spoil it for you. But I will say, make your own mind up as to what's accurate and what isn't. One of the people that had worked with him, one of the psychologists said, people who witness trauma have a different way of seeing the world. Trust issues, staying calm, and they're very black and white. And I can understand that. I can understand that. It took me years to be able to regulate my thoughts and look at things in a pattern of what is acceptable in the sense of normality and what is acceptable in the sense of how I grew up. So, for example, I had a conversation with my wife about somebody breaking into the property. Now, I have my missus and two girls here, and she's very much the opinion of let them take what they want. You know, there's a high likelihood they're breaking in drunk or they're just after money or they're not going to harm anybody. Take what they want, let them disappear. Don't look at them. You know, let them go away safely. Um, I'm not of that opinion. I grew up in a different way and I'm in the opinion of you break into my house. I'm not going to wait to see if you're armed. I'm not going to wait to see if you're going to hurt my girls. I'm dropping you. One way or another, you're going down, you ain't getting back up. And... That's not ego, that's not arrogance, that's not, hey, look at me, I'm so strong. There's millions of people that could easily beat me. Um, it's more a case of fear. I've seen what can happen if you don't look after yourself. And my mother was killed. I've known people that have been beaten, had their backs broken, smashed up badly. Um, been in plenty of, plenty of fights myself. Some of them didn't end too well in my favour. And either way, there's, there's a lot of guilt attached to that. So, no. I think people can be very, very black and white. And I think when it came to Pyro Joel, he probably saw the potential of what could occur with him being caught and made a rash decision. A decision which was wrong and a choice to kill a lady who was innocent, who didn't deserve it, in one of the most brutal ways. I have no sympathy for him, because you make that choice, and you made the choice to go to that property. I have no sympathy there, regardless of the amount of abuse that a person has received. You can paint a picture, but it doesn't mean that individual is going to become that monster. For example, as much as... I'm happy making the decision to drop somebody who enters my property who I think has intent to hurt my family. I'm not happy to go out and seriously hurt somebody, seriously injure somebody who tells me they're potentially going to come in and break into my property. There's a big difference between somebody saying something and somebody actually doing it. Another one. I